Welcome, dear friends, to the presentation of our first book, For a Test of the Heavenly Liturgy, Commemorating, Celebrating, and Living, an anthropological, theological, and liturgical reflection on African Sub Saharan music through St. Augustine and Sacrosanctum Concilium by Moses Wanjala, published in 2015 by STS or Studium Theologicum Salesianum here in Israel, Jerusalem campus. We are guided by the image of the transfiguration found in Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to 13 on this our cover page. The experience of the transfiguration at Mount Tabor was such a powerful, beautiful and touching moment that saw a forward test of the beauty of heaven revealed on earth with conversations between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and the voice of God the Father, to the extent that the disciples Peter, James, and John had to say to Jesus, Lord, it's good to be here. Jesus, however, tells the disciples, and he tells all of us, to calm down, to calm down into ourselves. He tells us to calm down into the lives of others so as to effectively, generously love them, to heal them, to serve them as God loves. And he invites us to come down, to touch and heal each other's lives, specifically the poor, the weak, the needy, the defenseless and marginalized. We could ask ourselves, do our liturgical celebrations, especially the Eucharist, the reconciliation and other sacraments through the verbal and nonverbal languages, do these our liturgical celebrations but especially with the help of music, of the Word of God, do they have the power to move our bodies, our minds, our hearts towards the experience and for a test of the glory of God, of His beauty, of the mercy of God? Do these liturgical celebrations reveal the liberation, the healing, the sweetness and goodness of the Lord already here and now on earth as it is forever in heaven, so that as we strive to live our lives to the full, we too can say, like the disciples, it is good to be here with you, Lord God, and with each other. Let us always remember, dear friends, that liturgy is the work of God and the work of the human part, the work of man, the Opus Dei and the Opus Hominis. Liturgy has a double movement from God who takes the initiative to man and from man to God. It is evident that when one comes in contact with the merciful God, with the forgiving and liberating God, with the healing God, who loves us so much as we are, mere speech, only speaking, mere speech is not enough to express the inner feelings and sentiments of the heart. One therefore sings from his heart, especially when he feels happy, he feels loved, he feels free. One sings when he feels healed and forgiven so much more than he deserves. Or one sings, even when he's troubled, downcast, when he's sad and in pain, one sings when he cries out to God as a, as a form of prayer from his heart. So whether we are happy, we sing to the Lord and cry out. We are sad, we sing and cry out to the Lord, but from our heart and the feelings of our heart. And many biblical references, especially from the Psalms, there's just a lot that spoke about crying to the Lord, singing to the Lord. Many biblical references, especially from the Psalms, like Psalm 89, 96, 99, 100, 104, 105, 150, and many other biblical references, especially from the Psalms, invite us to cry out, to sing a new song. These references invite us to shout to the Lord with our voices, but also with our silence to shout to the Lord with our hearts and with our lives, meaning with the whole being, body, mind, heart, and soul. In this book, dear friends, for a taste of the heavenly liturgy, we respond to the implementation of the Second Vatican Council that invites us to a full, conscious, active, and authentic participation in liturgy, emphasizing that in liturgy, we are not passive spectators. But rather, we, everyone, is an active participant who celebrates life with God, with others, with creation, and never alone, never celebrating alone. 
Imagine a celebration alone. Is it a celebration? One of the ways to realize this form of active participation is through music. For Israel, the freedom from slavery as God's people crossed the Red Sea is the main reason, is the motivation for singing and praising God for the people of Israel. That freedom. Christ's resurrection or our salvation, liberation, our freedom, our victory, our new life is the main reason for singing and praising God for us Christians. Yes, Christ's resurrection and salvation is the true Exodus song of for us Christians. And Sacrosanctum Concilium number eight, Vatican Council, two official document of the church on liturgy, Sacrosanctum Concilium number eight, offers us the best for our reflections when it says, as pilgrims in this earthly liturgy, we take part in a foretaste of the heavenly liturgy. That is to say, already here and now on earth, we celebrate and anticipate of our test the liturgy and life that we shall live at the end of time. Already here and now, we celebrate and foretaste the salvation, the freedom. We experience already here and now the peace, the happiness, the communion with God and with others that we shall live and celebrate in heaven forever at the end of time in this earthly life. So if we shall celebrate happiness forever in heaven, we already celebrate it here and now thanks to the liturgy. And the first chapter of this our book here, dear friends, the first chapter on African tradition, the role of music in the life of St. Augustine, who is an African, shows how African music and values are enriched by cultural values, by anthropological values, by biblical, liturgical, and musical treasures. Or, oh, this first chapter shows us how liturgical music is an instrument for a holistic integral formation of the human person as a whole. We celebrate liturgy with all our senses, with all our external and internal faculties of the body, of the mind, of the heart, and of the soul. This chapter of the number one always also treats the aesthetic and beautiful artistic value of music and how music led Augustine to conversion, especially the song Pick Up and Read. Augustine's conversion was made easy and possible by the preaching, meaning the word, and by the testimony, meaning the life of Ambrose. So the word of God and the life of Ambrose made the conversion of Augustine possible. It was also, the conversion was also made easy by the conversations with Christian friends that Augustine made with Christian friends. This, this conversation was also made easy by the reading of the power line letters. It was made easy, the conver conversion, by the prayers and tears of Monica, his patient mother. This conversion of Augustine was made easy by the vibrant musical experience of the Ambrosian Church of Milan, as well as the emotion on hearing her good, soothing songs that softened the heart of, of Augustine the Seeker. So music shook the depths of the soul of Augustine who was seeking for truth in other things, but he found that truth in God. Music shook his soul and his heart. And Augustine, who is a restless seeker of truth and beauty, Augustine, who is a professor of rhetoric, music, and harmonious oratory, and later Augustine, who was a shepherd, made his, his life a song of love and praise. Augustine testifies that music should always express and foster the unity of the believers of God's people together that they sing together in unison, signifying the brotherly love, the oneness, or the unity of hearts. All believers were of one heart and of one soul. And this is taken from Acts chapter 4, verses 32. Dear friends, when we come together in liturgy and pray together and join our hearts together, listening to each other as we pray, even in the silence, and we, it's like one voice raising itself to the Father, one voice of God's people, children, raising to the Father. And the second chapter here from our book, Fortress of Heaven and Liturgy, presents the new song of Christ and 
what is this song? It's the song of the scriptures, the song of the Eucharist, and the song of love. The new song of Christ is a means of foretasting already here and now the love, the peace, and the life of the Lord. That's the new song that is it is the communion. It's foretasting the communion already here now. It's foretasting the salvation and liberation already here now. The new song is foretasting the happiness of the Lord already here and now on earth as it is and as it will be forever in heaven. We foretaste already. We anticipate now the freedom and the, the love already here now as we shall live forever and, for, and live it and celebrate it forever in heaven. So the new song is a Paschal memorial music that enables us to commemorate the resurrection in the past or the liberation, the liberation of God in the past, to celebrate the liberation of God here and now, the past, the resurrection, and to live as new children, the life of Christ with us, to live the victory of our Lord's resurrection or our past. When we talk about the past, is our passing over from sin, our passing over from suffering, from slavery and death, our passing over from all this sin, suffering, slavery and death to a new life. This is what we celebrate, to a new life of freedom, a new life of happiness through the Lord, with the Lord, in the Lord, in Christ. Amid is our beautiful but often challenging realities today, following the Lord's command, do this in memory of me. Yeah, friends, when the Lord says do this, he means it. Worship is to do. To do what? To repeat the ritual of listening to the word of God. Every time we listen, we repeat the ritual of listening to the word of God and allow it to sink in our hearts, then we are doing what God told us because that word of God is a, like a double-edged sword that cuts and that heals. But what she is to do what again? Is to do the eating, the drinking uh, of the body and blood of Christ and becoming the body and blood of Christ. So we had a few back who, a philosopher who usually says we are what do we eat. We become what we eat. And what is it that we eat? We eat Christ. We become Christ. We eat communion we become communion and that Christ in us how beautiful it is when we see that Christ in us heals us and liberates us he liberates his people whenever we are we become instruments that heal others whenever the other people are we become instruments that heal others in every circumstance of life Augustine says a cantare amantis est meaning singing is for lovers Yes, the lover sings because he is loved. He rejoices in the presence of the beloved God and others. In the, the beloved is God and others. Love is the theme of the new song. The new song is the, for travelers, pilgrims, like you and me on earth. Travelers on earth who walk together, never alone, who walk together in life towards the heavenly homeland making life easier for each other, celebrating every moment, even now, and before testing already now, anticipating the liturgy in heaven. We, the liturgy in heaven, we already anticipate it here now as, as, as pilgrims, as new men and new people in the spirit. And the new song of faith, hope, and love is for all the earth. The new song comes from Christ, the new man, and not from the old man, Adam anymore and it belongs to the peaceful heart that acknowledges that appreciates that shares with others the wonders that god did in the past and continues to do even here and right now so the song of a new man cannot be a song of the flesh which is passing and perishable but of the heart the heart, dear friends, in the biblical Semitic language does not indicate only sentiments or feelings, but the whole person. Therefore, the heart is the central aspect of the entire person's mental, emotional, rational, and intellectual reality. The song of the heart is thus a song of, a, of the life of the entire person. Who loves with all his heart, with all his mind, with all his body, with all his soul, with all his strength, with all his sentiments of joy, of sorrows, of fears, of anxieties. And in singing, the, 
the heart is involved in singing. It is involved because it expresses the emotional feelings that mere spoken words cannot transmit. The song of the heart is of him who is connected to the earth but in pilgrimage towards God's house in heaven. The heart can sing only if it belongs to the city of God, Jerusalem, the vision of peace, and not in Babylon, the city of confusion that still has its songs and dances of a sinful nature in which a Christian cannot take part. The new song of of the scriptures is a song of grace. It's a song of, when we talk of grace, it's the unmerited and unlimited abundant favors and blessings. So the new song is a song of unlimited and unmerited favors, unlimited love, unlimited mercy and blessings from God. Not of, the new song is not of the rigid law or slavery anymore, but the new song is the song of love. This new song is the song of good thoughts, good works, good words, and good actions. We rise to God if our hearts are united, one body in Christ. He who sings praise tries. How? Because he prays to God in praise and in love. And also because he sings because he who sings adds to the voice the feelings of the heart. He who praises God not only sings, but also loves God whom he is praising and singing to, or singing about, or singing for. So we sing not only with the voice, but with the heart. In the third chapter, commemorating and celebrating and living the Lord's Day through African music, we consider the Christological, pneumatological, ecclesial, sacramental, and the scatological dimensions of Paschal music. In the first place, the Paschal time has a Christological music because Christ is our Passover lamb. This can be inspired by 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Who Christ is a Passover lamb who takes upon himself the sins of the world and saves us, forgiving us out of love, healing us and giving us new life out of love. He accepts the pain, the suffering that you and me would have endured in order for us to live again. And Christ is the true lamb of God that fulfills the ancient Old Testament promises of the Messiah, of the Savior. The Paschal music proclaims and celebrates Christ's presence with us, in us, and among us. As we see in Sacrosanctum Continuum, the documental liturgy, chapter numbers, numbers 5 and 6. The Paschal time is the music of the Spirit. And what does the Spirit do? The music of the Spirit that inspires us, that prompts us, advocates for us like a lawyer. The Paschal music is the music of the Spirit that guides our ways, that protects us, that teaches us everything. The Paschal music is the music of the Spirit that consoles us and makes us holy. That Spirit that, our, that sets our hearts on fire to love God and other. You know, when you feel the just as the, the tongue has, can, has fire that can kill, the tongue has also fire that can, can, can build and set uh, the whole of humanity on love. And so this new song is a song of, of love and the spirit is the music. Is the music, the music of the spirit is a music that consoles us and sets our hearts on fire to love God and others. Pasco time is a music of the feast of the church, ecclesia, new people, children of God. The church's Pasco sacrifice brings together those who are scattered from east, west, north, south, and makes us all one new, one united family of God, regardless of color regardless of language, regardless of nationality, status, or race. And so Pasco time is an eschatological music that enables us to anticipate already here, to forward test already here, God's saving and liberating presence among his own people, already here and now on earth, in view of the final liberation and fulfillment of everything through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ at the end of time, in heaven when we shall see God face to face. In the Eucharist, 
Christ raises the bread and wine. It raises the bread and wine. Christ raises what is human. He raises what is human. That is our body, our mind, our heart and soul. Christ raises everything about us, our whole lives. He raises into the realm of what is divine. So he raises everything that is human and created into the realm of what is divine. And sacred music invites us to also elevate, to lift up our hearts and minds. It, sacred music and sacred liturgy invites us to lift up our minds and our hearts and meaning, to lift up everything that we have and that we are, to lift it up to God. In the Psalms, the Word of God, God gives us words. He gives us words. Sometimes maybe we don't have words to use to God. So in the Psalms, when we read the Psalms and the Word of God, God gives us words with which we turn to Him in prayer. And at the same time, God responds back to us through the same Psalms, through the same Word of God. If we are looking for answers to our, uh, what we are going through, we use the Word of God and we shall get the answers there from God Himself of course, from other situations too, and from other events. Christ uses sacred signs and symbols, and Christ can use anything. So he uses sacred signs and symbols, like sacred music, he uses dances, art, and rites to share his loving, saving, liberating life with us. I was just thinking, a well-presented sacred music, a well-presented art and dance, moves and shakes people's hearts. Just go, imagine going on a theater and you see a powerful music. It moves, people feel moved with their hearts, leaving them with wonder. And today, many communities risk to be deprived of this mystic, vibrating power that Christian music can offer that expresses the sentiments of joy but also the sentiments of sorrow. And the Second Vatican Council appreciates the role of those who with their gift of song, everybody is gifted in song and in voice in one way or another. We just need to offer whatever we have and God will build and complete everything. Nobody needs to be an expert in this. So, but can do, it appreciates the role of those who with their song, who contribute to the beauty of liturgy, of celebrating God with us and our union with God. Because Christ is present in the world. Christ is present in the minister, in persona Christi. Christ is present in the Eucharistic species of the bread and wine. Because he, Christ is present in the, body of the bread and wine. Christ is present in the sacraments, in the assembly. And Christ is present when the church prays and sings the psalms. This we read from Sacrosanctum Concilium, the document on liturgy number seven. Sacred song or music united with the words, the word of God, instrumental music, word of God, or uh, the tonation plus the word of God, constitute a necessary and integral part of the sacred liturgy. This is from Sacrosanctum Concilium, Numbers 112. And music helps us, dear friends, to express our faith, to express our love for God and also for our neighbor as we rise to God. And St. John Bosco, our founder of the Salesian Congregation, would say that a house without music is like a body without soul. In order to discover more about how to commemorate, to celebrate, and how to live our liturgy, meaning how to live our relationship with God, with others, and with creation, below here down, right here down, is a link with a free PDF, a free PDF copy of our book, for a test of the heavenly liturgy. And dear friends, feel free to download this free PDF copy. Feel free to share it, this video, which you are listening to. Feel free to share this PDF with all, the PDF which is down here, which you can download with all. And feel free to subscribe for further updates so that together, together, we continue spreading the good news to all, always and everywhere. Dear friends, again, below, we also find other links where you can buy, now this is for buying, or you can order our fresh second book, Communion at Mensa in Family and Eucharistic Liturgy. It has only 422 pages. It is published by 
Libreria Ateneo Salesiano, LAS, or at the Salesian Pontifical University, Rome in Italy in 2021. And now it is present in our STS library here and other libraries here in Jerusalem, in the libraries of the Pontifical Universities of Rome, in publishing centers and bookshops in Italy, as you can see the links down, and at the Salation and other theological centers in Africa, among others. Of course, in most of these centers, it will reach slowly by slowly. So, dear friends, I wish you the best as we continue forward testing the freedom, the salvation, the peace, the love that God revealed to us through Jesus Christ so that we continue enjoying this freedom, the love, the peace, the communion, the unity, the oneness, that the peace that the Lord left for us and we already foretest it already here now as a preparation to the happiness that we shall live and the freedom that we shall live at the end of time. God bless you.